So now we're going to take a look at adding the nails and the holes for the nails. So if you recall here on our basic shapes, we created this planks node and we do have a nails as well as a holes uh, output that we're going to use. So let's start by taking a look at the holes. So here we're going to just uh, probably add this in to this section where we start to kind of blend into uh, what is going to end up being our height map. So uh, what we'll do here is uh, first, I'm just going to add a warp node. Uh, so we're going to add this warp. And here we're going to need an input and a gradient input. So here for our input, I'm going to use the holes. Now you can see I'm doing a lot of kind of painting and moving around here. So what I'm going to do uh, here for the holes is I can just left click and drag out a connection line. And then while I have this, I can hold down the Alt key and then I can use my middle mouse to kind of pan. So this is just another kind of tip for navigating. So now I can move this connection point all the way over here to this warp node. I can also use my right mouse button to zoom in and out while I'm holding down this Alt key. All right, so now that I'm in the correct location, I'm going to take this connection line here and just plug this into the input. All right, so now I have this set. Now, like I said, I need a gradient input to kind of drive this warp. So let's take a look at uh, kind of what we have here. So if I just come back, let's just take a look at this section here. So this node gives me this output, and I think I'm going to use this, uh, this height data here to uh, kind of drive that warp. So here I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected in my graph. I'm going to hit the space bar, and then I'm going to choose uh, this blur. Now, this blur is kind of the low quality version, uh, but for what we want to do, I think it's going to, it's going to work out OK. So we'll left click to create this node. Now, let's go back here to this blend. If we take a look, this is uh, where I had the small details. Uh, and it's just this uh, node here, which is right before where I started to add in kind of the not areas. So we're going to grab this guy here, just take out this output and plug it here into our blur. Let's double click the blur to take a look at this guy. It's too intense, so let's drop this value down quite a bit. So we're just going to do something like, say, this. All right, so we're going to use this blur. Let's just move this guy over here towards where our warp is located. Now let's take the output here of this blur and place it in as the gradient input to the warp. So we'll double click the warp. And wow, uh, just to start, this is way too intense. So let's just take our intensity value down uh, a lot. So you can see here I'm using like maybe 0 0.08. If we zoom in here pretty close, you can see that all I'm doing is just kind of slightly warping these holes, just so they're not this perfect round shape. So a little variation here. All right, so uh, that is going to take care of uh, these holes. Now we can start to take a look at the integration process for this. So what I'm going to do is uh, hit my space bar, use my blend. Uh, let's take our warp and plug that here into the foreground. Now let's come right over here to this final blend. This is uh, kind of the composite height that we had so far. It's got our wood pattern. It's got our crack lines. It has... Uh, it has our wood knot shapes and so on. So we're going to use this guy. Again, it's the node right before I plug in here into my normal. So uh, what we're going to do is take this normal output and just plug that here into the background. So we'll double click this blend. It's just switch this to subtract. So now you can see here that we have these holes subtracting out of our wood planks. All right, so now that we have that in place, we want to now add the nails into the holes. All right, so what we're going to do here is just add another blend. And uh, we're going to take the output of this blend and plug it here into our, our background. Now we need to grab the nails here for our foreground. So again, what I'll do is just come over here to where I have my planks output. Here's my nails. Left click, drag out the connection line, hold down the Alt key, and now I can use my navigation, my right and middle mouse button to move around my graph so that I can find the blend. And then here I'm just going to plug this into the foreground. All right, so we'll double click, make sure we're viewing this blend in our 2D view. And for the blending mode, we're going to set this to max lighten. All right, so now you can see here that our nails have, are now fitting right into the holes. And because of that warp in the hole, we have kind of some nice variation to this. All right, so that's working pretty well. However, there's one issue. Now, if we come back and take a look at uh, some of this variation we've been putting into in our height. So you'll notice that like if we look at this plank, this one is kind of darker here in our height map, which means this plank, it's tilted. So it's lower in this area than it is, say, in this area. But our nails are not 
uh, kind of taking this um, this depth change into consideration. So basically, even though this side of the plank is kind of rotated or tilted lower than this side, this nail and this nail are both at the same height level. So we need to address that, and it's pretty simple to do. Uh, so what we're going to do here is just multiply, use a blend and multiply in some type of grayscale value to uh, basically remap this height range. So I'm just going to just come back here and look into uh, my graph, uh, probably here in this small detail section. Uh, let's look at this slope blur if I just double click. Okay, here you can see that I have some nice kind of gradients and this is going to work well for me. So here what I'm going to do is uh, again just add another blend. So we have this guy up here. Uh, let's grab here, let me zoom in close so we can see it. We're using this slope blur. Uh, it's just giving me this pattern. Uh, it's in this small detail section. Uh, but like I said, the, the reason I'm choosing this one is just because, you, as you can see, it's dark here. It's, it's basically just giving me that, that height uh, variation that I need. So we're gonna take this and multiply this over our nails. So now, again, I'll just left click to drag out this connection line, hold down my Alt key, and then just middle drag to come up to this blend and we'll place this here into our foreground. So now let's grab uh, this foreground here, which is gonna be our nails. Now you'll notice I'm focused here in this area. So what I'm gonna do is just borrow this connection. And I can do that by just holding down the control key, left click, and you can see that it allows me just to borrow out or another instance of that connection node. And I'm gonna use that to just choose to place that here into my background and then just left click out an empty area to get rid of that connection line or that extra connection line we had there. All right, so now we'll double click this blend and we're gonna set the blending mode here to multiply. And here, if we take a look at our nails, you can see that now we have some nice variation on this height depth here for the, our nails that's going to match the height depth range that we have for each one of these individual planks. So we're basically just kind of remapping the height values for the nails themselves. So here, we'll take the output of this blend and plug that here into the foreground. So let's now double click here our blend and you can see that now the nails are following more closely in terms of kind of height depth with the actual planks themselves. All right, so that's gonna take care of the nails and now we can start to integrate this here into uh, the kind of material setup that we have thus far. Uh, so far we had just our normal and then we started the process here of creating this uh, height map which we're going to uh, start to change here as well. All right, so uh, here we have this normal map, uh, and let's just take this height now and plug it in as the normal. And so here, if we look in our 3D view, we can start to see uh, the result of these nails now appearing here. Uh, so one other thing I think I might try, I'm gonna hit my space bar, and uh, I'm gonna do a search here for this uh, Sobel. So I'm gonna look at possibly using this normal Sobel node here. So we're going to uh, use this one perhaps. Let's take a look. So here we're going to take the output and plug it into this normal Sobel and uh, let me see what I had for my intensity we had that set at 5 so let's come back to this guy here and we're going to set this to uh, an intensity value of 5 as well now this is just going to give us uh, a just a, a little bit smoother kind of effect here to our normal so here you can see that you know we have a lot of kind of crunchy detail here in our normal and if we look at the Sobel version it just kind of smooths things out a bit so this might just give us a, a you know a more polished kind of normal so uh, let's just plug this here into our base material so we can see the result here in our 3d view and uh, okay so it's looking fine I think we'll probably just end up going with that node so I'm gonna take this uh, previous normal and just delete it all right so uh, here is our normal and uh, now what we want to do is just kind of start to organize our graph so we can kind of, you know, make sure that we can see everything that's going on here. All right, so um, here this still is in our section where we're starting to create this kind of grayscale area as we have mapped out. So this group of nodes uh, that we've been working on, as we said, this is going to be our nails. Uh, so let's just select these nodes here and let's frame them. And here I'm just going to give this a title. We'll call this nails. So now we have that uh, kind of fit into the correct kind of category for that pattern. Uh, let's also extend uh, just again visual, so it just makes sense visually. Let's extend here our grayscale frame so that we can you know really make sure that we can understand what's happening here, and we'll move this nails down into here. Okay, so um, here at this stage, if we take a look, uh, this guy here, this. This blend is the composited effect of the height that we had before, which is our, you know, our cracks here, our wood pattern, our wood knots and our nails. So this is like our ending kind of height 
that we've been working towards in all of these videos. So I'm going to take this guy and move it down towards here. Uh, and then, like I said, this is our nail section. So we can just, you know, move this over into this section here. Okay, so now if we come back here towards the bottom where I kind of have all of my frames, here's our height. Let's grab this guy and uh, bring this in and just use this as our frame here for our overall kind of height. This is our kind of end product, so to speak, for our height map. So we'll put this guy into here so we can really see clearly what that is doing. All right, so now here in this section is where we're starting to come into this map extraction phase. And so you'll see here that I actually have uh, a section here for that. So I have this base material uh, extrapolate maps. So let's grab uh, this frame here, our base material, and let's start to uh, make sure that we organize this correctly here. So let's come into here and let's take this base material part and we'll just put this here. And uh, now what we're going to do is start to look at this extrapolate maps. So you can see here we have normal, ambient occlusion, and roughness. So here we'll expand this guy. This is our normal, so we know that this guy is already working for us. Now, what we have here is our, our height. Now, I said already that we have our height in this section. So let's do this. Let's, um, let's keep it uh, possibly like, let's keep our height here in this kind of grayscale category because you can see this is like a real detailed height map. Now, this is like our overall pattern, and this is the the output that I use when I'm extrapolating the map. So you can see we have this really nice detailed grayscale version here. Uh, this is what we're using to create our normal map from. This is what we're going to use to create our ambient occlusion and so on. However, we have these nodes here, which I'm also calling my height. Now, these are the ones that are actually uh, being sent right into the shader here, and I'm using that in this base material node. So, um, what I want to do is I want to keep all this kind of high frequency detail. I always want to keep that in the normal map. And then here for uh, the actual height itself, I want to have kind of a softer blurred version, which if I'm using, let's say, parallax occlusion or tessellation, this height map is uh, going to provide me like the overall kind of silhouette of the large form shapes. And all of the high frequency detail is going to be placed here in the normal map. And the reason I want to do that, because is that I want to separate out this high frequency part uh, because if I had like a real high frequency information here in my normal and I also had that here in my displacement, we're going to get a lot of noise. Uh, also, we'd have to have really high displacement rates to try to, you know, you know, capture all this detail and so on. So um, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, separate this, as I said. So here we have this height. Uh, and looking at this, I think I want to make uh, just a, a few changes to this guy. Uh, so here uh, is where we have uh, this blur. So I think what I would like to do with this is instead of having this kind of cheap blur node in here, uh, I'm just going to get rid of it. So one thing I can do with the node selected, I can just hit backspace, and that will remove the node, but it will keep uh, this connection line here for me. So now we have kind of this blend. And you can see that basically what I'm trying to get is the plank shapes and these kind of cracked lines here. So some, uh, as you can see, a lot of the detail, like our nail holes, uh, our kind of our kind of high frequency detail for those wood knots, that's all missing from this stage. Now, what I want to do is come in here and I'm going to add a blur. And this time I am going to use this blur high quality grayscale. So we'll use this guy and plug into this uh, blur here. Now, by default, it's way too intense. So let's bring this guy down and let's try something more like this. So now you can see that I still have, you know, the the overall kind of silhouette kind of shape of each one of these planks. They're nice and rounded on these edges. Uh, we still see some nice kind of um, angled fall off here to our depth. So this here is brighter as it kind of as this plank is kind of tilted down towards this kind of lower height range. And then I can also still see uh, some value here for these crack lines. This is what we're going to use for our actual height map. So here on my base material node, uh, you can see that I have this height. Let's take this guy, this output, and plug this into here. All right, so that is going to uh, you know, better serve what I want to do for this case. So now let's just take these nodes here and just move them kind of in this kind of grayscale section here. So we know what they're doing, but let's take this height and let's put this into our map extraction uh, section here. And then we'll just kind of move this down. Okay, so now we're, like I said, we're in the process of starting to create our, our full base material, which is here. 
So let's put this guy into our base material. And then here we have this little category where we're starting to extrapolate these maps. Okay, so at this stage, we have our height. Uh, let's save what we have so far. And then let's come over here to our materials. And here, let me check and make sure what shader I have. So in this case, I have default. If I go to my definitions, PBR metal rough. And I'm on parallax occlusion. What I'm going to do is switch this here to tessellation. So now I'm using the tessellation shader. Then we'll come over here to material, edit. Uh, and you can see here the parameters. And now we have this scale factor. So here, what I'm going to do is just start to increase the scale factor. Uh, let's set it to like maybe a value of, say, 3. OK, now let me just kind of back out here uh, in my 3D view so we can zoom out. And, and if we just kind of look here at an angle, I'll just kind of start to move my light around a bit. You can see that now that height and how it's, you know, serving the, the processes of, like I said, that overall kind of large form silhouette shapes here. And we can start to see those shapes kind of defined now in this height. And then again, like I said, the normal map is what's serving uh, as, as the map that's bringing these kind of high frequency details and things like that. So like I said, I always separate the two. Now, one last thing I want to do in this video while we're talking about extrapolated maps, let's take a look at creating our ambient occlusion. So here I'll hit the space bar start to search for ambient occlusion. Here we have our node. Let's so left click to create this node. This is going to be a horizon based ambient occlusion node. Uh, it works really well. Uh, gives you pretty much uh, a similar uh, effect of if we just ray trace bake this from a high res mesh. So it's, it's really high quality. Now, in order for this to really work, it, that's where we need this very high detailed height pattern map that we've been creating so far. Again, this is like the core grayscale map uh, that we've been extrapolating all our maps from. And here we're going to do the same thing. So here, let's just move these guys back out of the way. And let's take this height and plug that here into our ambient occlusion. So now we'll double click. Let's take, check this ambient occlusion. And here we have the ability to change our height depth. So I'm just going to kind of lower this a bit to get, I don't know, we'll try something like this to start. OK, so now we need to integrate this into our base material. So we'll select the node. Here, down in the user defined maps section, we'll just enable ambient occlusion. So we'll set this to true. Gives us a nice uh, ambient occlusion input. And then we'll just make the connection here. So that is going to provide us with our ambient occlusion here. OK, so now we have this in place. Uh, what I might want to do now is kind of go back. Uh, maybe let's try 0 0.02 for this. And that is going to be our ambient occlusion. Now we can also you know, take a look at maybe adjusting our radius and so on. Uh, in this case, uh, I think I'm just, well, I'll tell you what. Let's maybe leave it at something like maybe 0.45. OK, so that is going to close out this video. Uh, what we've done here is we've integrated our nails. So we had uh, the nails, and then we had the holes pattern. And we blended those down here into uh, our uh, height map that we had before, which was uh, this guy here. So we've integrated that. And then we've also added the nails in. Uh, one of the things that we did for the nails was we multiplied them uh, based on uh, this kind of grayscale pattern here, which again kind of redistributed kind of the height value ranges for those nails so that they more appropriately kind of match the depth range for each plank. So we did that with just a simple multiply. That gave us our final height map that we've been creating that we've been using for our overall kind of pattern shapes to create uh, our material. So like I said, everything that we've been doing so far, all these nodes, all is has been uh, basically converges down to this one point. Then what we do is we take this map and we start to extrapolate our other maps, such as our normal. Here we have uh, this overall kind of height, which is, again, kind of blurred. So it uh, represents kind of the large form silhouettes. And then here we have our ambient occlusion. All that feeds here into our base material. And then we just use our frames here to uh, basically kind of call out what these sections are. Extrapolated maps, base material. And here is the result that we have at this time.